everybody, welcome to another chemistry video lesson. Uh, today we're going to take a look at Bohr's model of the atom. We're going to look at uh, what's uh, going to start off the modern view of the atom or the modern, modern atomic theory. Um, when we last left the atom, we were talking about uh, Rutherford's uh, gold foil experiment and the fact that the atom is actually composed of a central nucleus that's highly dense with uh, protons and neutrons uh, located inside of it with a positive charge and the electrons found somewhere in the outside of the atom. Now this is a, a picture of what most people would think of when they conjure up an image of what the atom looks like and it's not quite complete. There's some stuff in here that's not uh, uh, correct. Uh, obviously the, the magnitude of the size is very off, is way off in this picture. Uh, but the electrons, where are those electrons and what are they doing was the big mystery. We, we found the protons, we found the neutrons, we knew where they were. But the electrons were still very uh, mysterious at this time in the early 1900s. Okay, So in 1913, Niels Bohr comes up with this idea of how to explain what's going on with the electrons. Now he takes this revolutionary idea that was formulated by a scientist named Max Planck in the, uh, in 1900. Um, he came up with this idea that energy is quantized. Now we're not going to get into too much detail here because this could take us off on a very long journey here but the idea was that energy is not uh, can't be broken down into any size piece that we want. That at the very fundamental level just like with matter um, energy can only be broken down into small pieces and those small pieces are what are called quanta. Okay, Quanta are the smallest pieces of energy that are available. This is idea of quantized energy, that energy comes in little quantities. Okay, So quantum is the smallest quantity of, of energy that's available for use. Quanta would be the plural of quantum. Okay, so this idea was really, really revolutionary at the time. It really threw a lot of scientists off. Um, and Bohr actually took this idea as a young scientist and embraced it and thought, hey, I'm going to try to use this as opposed to saying that it's, it's, it's wrong and apply it to the atom. Now, a lot of crazy stuff comes out of quantum mechanics. Uh, Niels Bohr is actually the one, one that said anyone who's not shocked by quantum theory has not understood it. Um, just really goes to show that there's some really, really crazy stuff going on here. But again, let's focus here and get back on track and kind of just talk about how he used this idea to um, describe the atom. Okay, so what he said is that the electrons are sitting in these energy levels or electron shells. I tend to call them energy levels, but other teachers tend to call them electron shells. Um, their energy levels are going to relate back to the quantized energy, that there are distinct energy levels with a particular uh, amount of energy associated with them. So the n equals 1 is the first energy level, it's the lowest energy, then you go up to the next energy level which is 2. And the thing about quantized energy is that there is no half here. There's no 1 and 3 quarters, no 1 and 7 eighths. Uh, it's either first energy level or second energy level. Um, if you think of it, um, quantized energy works more like a, a uh, a ladder. So if you're walking up a ladder, you're in the first rung of the ladder, or you're on the second rung of the ladder, or the third. There is no half. But if you're going up a smooth ramp, which was what they thought of as classical energy, if you're going up a ramp, well, you can go up in any increments you want. You could take a giant step or a little step. There's no specific pieces here. But going up a ladder, there is. So quantized energy is a lot like a ladder rather than going up a smooth um, uh, ramp. Okay. So, uh, N is going to be a representation of these energy levels that Bohr was talking about. Now, what he said or found was that there's a certain number of electrons that can fit into these particular energy levels. The first energy level can hold two electrons, while the second one can hold eight, and the third one can hold 18. So, let's take a little, little bit closer look at what I'm talking about here. So this is a little bit more, again, this isn't what the atom looks like, but these are just representations. These are models that are used to help us to understand. So over here is his energy levels. He said the electron has to be sitting in the first energy level or the second energy level or the third energy level. So our electrons are going to be sitting in these orbits, you know, and you can think of this, you know, just like a planet orbit that they're going around and around the, the, the nucleus just like the Earth goes around the Sun and that's sometimes this is referred to as the planetary model of the atom. Um, but the idea here is that it's not really the case because a planet isn't, you know, it is finally quantized energy but it's so big it's kind of ignoring it. But okay, get back on track here. Okay, so the electron has to be in the first energy level or in the second energy level. It cannot exist in between and that's the strangeness of this quantized energy is that there is never an electron found in this point here. It just 
doesn't exist there. It's either going to be in the third energy level or boom, it pops to the fourth energy level. Again, very, very crazy idea. Now, two terms you should know, ground state and excited state. Ground state says that the electrons are going to fall to the lowest energy spaces available. Now, remember, the first energy level can hold two electrons, while the second energy level can hold eight. So if the first energy level is filled, then we're going to start to put electrons in the second energy level, and we'll keep putting them in there until we have eight. Now, this electron would be considered an excited electron because it's not in its ground state, because it could obviously fit into the space here. So therefore, that would be considered a, an excited electron. So we can take these electrons and we can excite them. And the way we excite the electrons is that we hit them with some kind of energy. So if I were to take some sort of external energy, say like heat or light or something, or heat, well, I like those work, but heat or some sort of electrical energy, the electron will promote and go up into an excited state. And when I take that energy away, the electron will then go ahead and drop back down. And when it drops back down, it goes back to its ground state. It will then release that energy back out. And that was the premise behind this. These electrons will move up and down these energy levels if we add or, you know, if we take the energy or stop adding the energy, it will come back out. So what Bohr did to prove this idea, as crazy as it is, is he looked at light. Now, hopefully you know that if you take a white light, okay, and you shine it and you put it through a diffraction grating or a prism, this is what um, uh, Isaac Newton did way back in the, I forget what year it was, but way back in the 1600s, anyway, so he took this light and broke it up into the continuous spectrum, the rainbow effect, okay, um, now if we take an element, we take particular elements and we heat them up and we pass them through to diffraction grating, we're not going to get a continuous spectrum, we get these distinct lines, this is referred to as an emission spectrum, and the emission spectrum has particular lines that are always given and every element has its own unique fingerprint, so what Bohr did was he took hydrogen and he took the element hydrogen and he took its emission spectrum and he compared it to his energy levels and he calculated, meticulously calculated, you can see the calculations here, we're not going to get into those, um, the, the energy that was associated with the electrons bouncing up and down. So he looked at if there was an electron dropping from this energy level down to the second energy level, it would give off this blue light or the blue green light, which whoops, corresponded exactly to the line spectra. And both of these matched up, and all of it matched up really, really well for this, and really proved this uh, idea of quantized energy for the electron, and revolutionized a lot of things, and made a lot of people, you know, thinking about what's going on. Um, so that is a concrete example of how and why, you know, the electron is quantized. Now this down here is a another way of looking at the energy levels. Again, another, these are models or ways of interpreting this idea of energy levels and quantized energy. Uh, an electron sitting here in the first energy level is going to be promoted up to the second energy level. Take a look at the energy here. This here would be our change in energy. This is how much energy it would we would need in order to get that electron to go up to that energy level. So from here to here is the amount of energy needed to get it from the first to the second. Now if you notice, if I go to the second energy level, to the third energy level, I need less energy. And then from the third to the fourth less, fifth to the sixth, notice that the energy is getting smaller and smaller as we get further and further out away from the nucleus. Now hopefully that makes sense because as we get closer to the nucleus, the electron is held to the nucleus. Remember the nucleus has a positive charge and if the electron is negatively charged on the outside and has a negative charge to it, it's going to be attracted to the nucleus. So it makes sense that if the electron is in the first energy level, it's going to be closest to the nucleus, it's going to be held with a stronger force, whereas electrons in the higher energy levels are going to have less pull on them so they're going to be easier to remove and that's going to have a huge consequence on chemistry. So the electrons on the outside are special electrons because they're furthest from the nucleus and they're going to be interacting with um, other things and causing chemical reactions and so on and so forth. Anyway, that's why we need to talk about this because it's all about how those electrons move. Okay, so I think that's a pretty good uh, explanation of Bohr's model for right now. Um, in the next video, I'm going to talk about quantum theory and how that uh, this, this idea of Bohr's model is not complete. There's still some, some pieces that are still not known, and we're going to look at those uh, in the next video lesson. Uh, so thanks for watching, and I will talk to you later.